This is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Get real. No. No. Y'all, y'all, y- this just is stop. a sham. It's finally here. Drum roll. Welcome to DBL. Happy Monday, everybody. Stephanie Jones, fresh off a plane from Rwanda. Yeah. Vancouver, actually, last night. <laughs> you always do this, and I don't know if you're <laughs> no, telling the I'm truth telling or the not. Truth. No, I, am, the I truth. swear I'm telling the truth. I went to go see Coldplay. It was absolutely uh, amazing. You guys have only got a few dates left. They're off in some really fancy locations. They will be in California, but the most interactive beautiful show I've ever seen. Wow. And you said Vancouver? Yes. I love Vancouver. Oh, Great it's city. very rainy, like kind of moody. Romantic. Yeah. Very romantic, yeah. Wore a raincoat, yeah. which was very sexy the whole time. Yeah. It's so, and then a nice coffee, the mountains in the background, uh, a I'm couple not, I'm French I'm going to say this, Canadians. I'm probably going to get hate for this, but the coffee in Vancouver is some of the worst coffee I've ever had. Highly disappointed. <laughs> mm. I'm sorry, but it wow, was awful. Wow, you ruined that picture for me. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> You're throwing out your coffee. I, I literally said to the hotel, I said, where is the best coffee? They gave me a list of about five. I tried all five, and all of them sucked. Wow. Wow, Karen, Vancouver, Vancouver. coffee stinks. Sorry, stakes. it was bad. It was really bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, but sorry to go on about this, but I did actually go to my local coffee shop this morning and said, what is the deal? They said the really cold weather can make it taste more bitter. And they said in places where it's more rainy and cold, they actually want a stronger brew because it just oh. gets them through that misery of the bad weather. Oh. Mm. Like Starbucks in Seattle. Yeah, I was just saying. Okay. Nirvana Starbucks. All right, should we talk about some stuff? Yeah. Sorry. All right. I was very passionate. No, I like it. Very I was very passionate very about that. Good. Stephanie Jones and her world travels. <laughs> All right, here we go. Welcome to DBL. Taylor Swift fans lost their minds during yesterday's football game between the Kansas City Chiefs and my, unfortunately, Chicago Bears. Boo. Right. <laughs> Taylor was at the game and was spotted in a suite sitting next to Travis Kelsey's mom. Oh, She's, she's working suits. his mom. Oh, yeah. Look at her. She, she says thank you right here. Watch. Watch. She, she says look at her. Thank you. Got, you. Listen, that's the fastest way to oh, a man's yeah. heart. She is, is, she's working that mummy. That is for sure. Go on, Taylor. It was either stomach or mom. I was going to say. But yeah. <laughs> so that's Travis Kelsey's mom. And after Travis, if you remember, extended an open invite for Taylor to watch him at Arrowhead Stadium. Looks like she took him up on that. Taylor was caught on camera looking very excited after Travis scored a touchdown right there. The two were spotted then leaving the stadium after the game. That was shot by Walter Payton's son. He's a reporter now for WGN, Jared Payton. He played football too, but he just happened to catch them and put it out there. Amazing clip. Yeah, so that was the fan who caught, or then another fan caught Travis driving off in a vintage convertible. Cute. Wow, they're already all over the place, these two, huh? Yeah. (laughs) All right, well, that's it. What did we think about uh, Travis rocking out yesterday with T Swift? Oh, me? Oh, oh we got more. Yeah. There it is. Oh, there we go. Okay, let me finish this. <laughs> okay. And get this. Even Travis's team is in on the fun. Patrick Mahomes said he felt pressure from Swifties to throw Travis a touchdown pass. Mm-hmm. And during a post game interview, Coach Andy Reid joked that he set the couple up. So everybody was in on this. I mean, the reporters, they yeah. crushed the Chicago Bears. So for me, it was a nice, like, Get away, talk, like, it's not here. The pain's not here. It's a here. distraction. It's a distraction. You disassociated from yeah, the Yeah, I just pushed the, the pain of the Chicago Bears <laughs> way down, and I, it almost made me happy for the couple. <laughs> yeah, because it was a distraction. That's so sad. What did we think about this? Okay, I'll go real quick so you can talk football. No, I'll, yeah, say, no. I'll say this. I was super excited. It made the game exciting for Swifty fans. But it seems at this point, and I'm really into it, I really am, a little manufactured, just a little. Because at one point, you saw the Jared Payton clip. Yeah. He's wearing this blue and white outfit that looked like he does wear really weird, like, cool fashionable outfits but that we searched and found that it's called the 1989 suit by like kidsuper.studios.com right there and it's Travis post it posing and she's having her 1989 uh, album come out with her version and her concert videos coming out in like a couple days. So Didn't all she of this. have an album called 1989. She's doing her Taylor's version because Scooter Braun had taken it. Remember? So all of this seems a little, a little planned, manufactured, a little manufactured. But can I be honest? That's very Taylor. Yeah. She's very choreographed. Everything she does is planned. But uh, you know, I I hope it's real. What do you think? Uh, I, I think it's real, but I think they're definitely make they're gonna squeeze that lemon for every bit of juice, and I'm here for the lemonade, so I'll take it. Like literally, <laughs> I think it's fabulous. Why I not? I mean, do I approve of his choice of outfit? No. <laughs> um, it's do a I think Taylor reason. Swift is really milking that mummy? Yes, I do. Yeah. But you know what? They're cute. They're happy. It's gonna sell stories, and we're talking about it. So why not? Love is love. Love is. Let's love. be happy for it. And, and you know what? If they stay together, there's gonna be some good music. If they break up 
going to be even better. That's true. So we're winning either way. That's true. Al, love yeah. is love, buddy. What do you think? I mean, me and, me and the homies couldn't stop talking about it yesterday. Love is love. It's all, you know. I don't, you know, I, I'm the other side, the side that's affected by this. Like, this came into my world. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're in the group chat you didn't want to be. Well, is that yes, right? Yeah, I got, yeah. And, and one of us has, you know, a Samsung, so you can't get out of the, yeah, out right, of the group right, text. Right. And that's, that's what it feels like to be an old black man in this culture now. I don't ask for a lot. You know, I was outside working in my yard most of the day. I like to make artwork and make music and do stand up. <laughs> I try and retreat from the world, but here it comes. And now I have to look at a, a, a stuffed uh, luxury box, maybe get two. And it was pretty crowded. I don't know why all those people are there. I don't know why they were cheering like that. They were already up 37 uh, nothing. It, it seemed were they a really? manufactured yeah. and it just like, we're uh, speaking for the old men with kids. We're not doing any weird stuff. We're not DMing 18 year olds. You guys are coming to us now. Leave us alone. Like we don't want to be in your world. <laughs> Leave us Go alone. Go to all your get tours. off our lawn. Go to your concerts. Get your T-shirts. Sell your stuff. Please leave us alone. <laughs> Please, so oh, please no. leave us alone. Oh my God! Please leave us. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to do this. Leave, <laughs> they, like, leave me be. Leave me be. That's Al's PSA. Please oh. leave us alone. Leave Al alone. Just leave Al alone. He lives a simple life. The more you know. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. All right, let's get this last one in. Speaking of football, Usher is Woo! headlining this year's Super Bowl halftime show yes. in Las Vegas. So Usher said he can't wait to bring the world a show unlike anything else they've seen before. Usher is also dropping his ninth studio album on Super Bowl Sunday Smart. conveniently. That's right. It'll be his first album in nearly eight years. Whoa. So last year's Super Bowl performance from Rihanna brought in 120 million viewers, making it the most watched halftime show of all time. I'm excited for Usher. I'm a big I'm a big Usher fan. For sure. Yeah, Absolutely. me too. What do you think, Steph? I think it means we're getting old because when I first saw Super Bowl games, I didn't really know who the bands were and I was like, who are they? And now I know every single year and every single song and I am oh. loving it and living my best life. And I'm like, oh. I'm at that point. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Steph just like blew my mind with that because I'm like, my kids wouldn't really know who they know who, who he is probably. What's the cutoff for Usher right now? Like who's well, the I, okay, youngest? This is really wait. This is really 39? controversial. Yeah. But like Roche, my fiance was like, oh Usher, that rubbish. Oh. I was like, what? Oh wow. This is amazing. Yeah. So, but a few years ago, it was all him, and he was like living, loving his life. Right. Now it's Rihanna and Usher, and I'm like living mine, which is like quite scary. Yeah. <laughs> Usher's got a residency in Vegas. I believe too. So yeah. that also shows amazing. how old you are too. Sure. Wow. You know, when yeah, you get I that think residence. when you get residency yeah. status, it's like I'm no longer traveling for people. You can come to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be here every night. But he's like, can I be honest? He's an enormous. <laughs> he's such a good showman. Like he puts yes. on oh, such yeah. a good show. One of the best dancers this ever. ever lived, like Michael Jackson really. did at some point. Like mm -hmm. Bruno Mars good. And at some point, I felt like they skipped Usher. Like he should have been deserving of it before. A little I think bit he before. did host it before. If I'm not mistaken. I don't think he ever had. Oh really? No, I thought he. He performed, but he was, I think he performed for, with someone else, didn't he? He performed. Yeah, so he, he okay. so this yeah. is his first Are we sure about that? Yeah. I'm pretty yeah, sure yeah. I saw that. Okay. That no, because he was be like, back. I've got a whole catalog that yeah. deserves to be recognized for itself yeah. when he was speaking to okay. another. Okay, and I do think he will bring up as a guest the Beebs. That's, that his, awesome. that's his protege. That's his mentor. Those two are connected. They did. They've danced together before. They're both great dancers. Well, let's bring it in two different generations. Yeah, as well, which, I think that would which be I think will be amazing. Am what? I off? What do you think? No, no. I, th I think that what you're saying makes sense on paper. I just uh, all this morning I was struggling to think. Is there, did they ever have a verse on either one song? Because there needs to be, when you're going to bring somebody out, there needs to be like an inorganic place to bring them out. Yeah. So if you have a Missy Elliott song and Buster Rhymes does the hook, then when she gets done with her verse, Buster needs to come out of nowhere. But it makes sense in terms of the song. If Beebs comes out and just does a background dance, does that make sense for no, the No, I think he'll sing. If Beebs comes out, he's yeah, not going to Yeah, I think he will. And there is a song they did together that's going viral now where they did a weird dance, and it's really bizarre, and everyone's, like, calling for them to do it again. So they perform it's before. It's so going to happen. I hope, I hope you're right, because yeah. I'm, I'm a believer. I yeah. love the Ste beat. Steph blew my mind with that, though. You're old when you know the Super Bowl acts. That makes so much sense. Now, I remember literally being back in England, didn't really know what the Super Bowl was, but always watching the halftime shows. And when I was growing up, I didn't know who loads of the people were. It was a bit, you know, yeah. stuff my mum and dad listened to. Mm -hmm. But now every year I'm getting more and more excited, which is more and more worrying.
Yeah, we're, we're getting old. Yeah. But uh, just to clear up, 2011, Usher performed with the Black Eyed Peas at the Super Bowl. Oh, yeah. that was a That's weird one. Was. Remember that? Why yeah. is that weird? Black no, no, it was a weird. It was a weird performance. Oh. I didn't love that performance. Well, let's get this last story. And speaking of Vegas, Kelly Clarkson stumbled upon a street performer on her way to a sound check. She gave her a tip. Then the woman asked Kelly to sing, totally unaware of who she was. Kelly Clarkson. <laughs> <laughs> No. So you think, I don't know, I'm, I kind of think she it clicked for her. No. We were in the break saying, Tori said she doesn't think she even knew that was Kelly Clarkson. I think, I think there's a moment where yeah, it clicks that. right there. That, yeah. I think she yeah. knows she's a good singer and there's people gathering. And I think they see that she's being filmed and she's like, oh my God, are you someone famous? But I still don't really... No, I think she no, does. She okay. I think she did when she covered her mouth. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Yes, up until then. Okay. I felt she just felt she was someone. But it's really cool to have happen. All right, here comes. Oh, can we get some more tips? Yeah, we get dude. Kelly Clarkson. I think that's more symbolic of where we are with debit cards. Nobody has cash anymore. Yeah, that's really hurting the yeah. street performers. I'm a cash guy. Dude. You know what stinks? I had to do this this weekend, and I only had a 20. And I was like, ah, it's a lucky day, buddy. Oh. But he was performing, and, not, and nobody was giving him tips. So I was like, oh. whoa, that was cool. Hey, yeah. that was a god saying good job for you. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, that was an angel. Thanks, buddy. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Mine doesn't work, see? And speaking of religion, it's Yom Kippur today, It is right? Yom Kippur. Today is the Day of Atonement. We ask for uh, forgiveness for our sins. We don't eat all day for 24 hours. So if I've hurt you, I ask for your forgiveness. It's our highest of days, Day of Atonement. Very nice. Ding. That's all right. Thanks, buddy. Coming up on DBL, writers <laughs> have reached a tentative deal with Hollywood Studios to end the strike. Does this mean your favorite shows will be back soon? And Pauly Shore pitches the idea of playing fitness icon Richard Simmons in a biopic. Could this really happen? They look. I mean, they look. That's, that's good. Like that was good. How much Jeff is uh, reminding hey, her of her little, daddy. There's little they fish because I saw the kid can fish. You have to throw back. What, I what don't else know. does I Jeff say that oh, reminds you of, of, of your dad? Like this, they both wear like this gold yeah. chain with the cross on it under. I think it's a Chicago thing because my dad's from the same area that Jeff's from. Is he they, religious? Is he religious? Yes, very religious, just like Jeff. Yeah, they're like the same person. I think they were just raised the same way in Chicago suburbs, I think. But yeah. I I love, wonder, but even the stuff that Jeff does that annoys me, I'm like, oh, that's so my dad. That's so <laughs> maybe my dad. What, what is your? Uh, do you, do you I give think it annoys money you because it's your dad. Yeah, exactly. Oh, uh, I don't. Yeah, if there was someone that was really good, I'm more good. Like I hate when um, if I see someone at the side of the road that have got kids. That I, I cannot not the give them money. The kids are the dogs. The dogs give me too. Yeah. I was because uh, Jordan always drives by with the kids as this homeless guy where we live in the. What do you call it? Like the uh, mini mall area right, or whatever? Yeah. Like a plaza? Yeah, yeah, and he's with his dog. So every time I go to uh, yeah. McDonald's, I always buy him a cheeseburger. Really? I yeah. 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 I always want to give dog food or something. And what's weird is yeah, I'm like, I do I feel more that. empathy for it? Like I should be, sometimes I'm like, are they, I don't know. I feel like I should be feeling empathy whether or not there is a dog. I don't know. I don't, the, the thing that I think we're saying now is now when you're in your yeah. car. So, have you guys seen the guy that's yeah. when you're in your car at the stoplight, there's a guy that's juggling? Yeah. yeah. He'll be done and yeah. he'll come up to your window. Yeah. Like he'll juggle in the crosswalk. And then ask and, for, yeah. There's yeah. one that off of Santa Fe where I come from work, where it doesn't matter. He's there, I mean, he's been there for years. Really? But thank God I could just turn right. <laughs> and I don't ignore know if him. Yeah, I could ignore him. <laughs> you <laughs> juggle your way around. <laughs> That's at Cherry Creek Mall. And we yeah. reckon, me and Rache were like watching, we were like, in an hour, we reckon they make about $100 an hour. Is that right? At least. A hundred bucks? Because We're giving 20. <laughs>
Welcome back. We could see our favorite TV shows coming back on the air soon. After 146 days, the Writers Guild of America has reached a tentative deal with studios that could finally put an end to the writer's strike. This is great news. The deal is reported to include higher residuals from streaming services, higher wages for writers, and protection against AI. Very important. We could see late shows and daytime talk shows coming back as soon as next week. Meantime, 150,000 actors are still on strike, but I feel like if they get this done, they'll be next. It's yes. going to come yeah. next. And may I just say, this is what solidarity gets you. When everybody joins in in a uniform way of saying this is unacceptable, even the studios try to wait them out and starve them out and do it. And they wasted more money. They lost, we think, $6, six billion. billion in this. When all they were asking was around a $47 million uh, pay raise for the writers, they could have ended this weeks ago. So it shows the greed of the corporations, in my opinion, and the solidarity of the writers. It is the summer of the strike, and I'm proud of the writers. And I'm hey, proud. how crazy is this? It's happened on your holiday, on Yom Kippur as That's well. That's very true. And there's a lot of <laughs> Jewish writers out there, yeah, I think, that are is. very happy. I'm not you trying to be. <laughs> yeah, I'm a Jew, so yes, it's okay. there you go. Yeah. There you go. But yes. I, I was just thinking to myself, this is what happens when you get out in front of a problem. For as much as we're talking about pay raise and pay increase, this was more about the future of human beings in entertainment. When you start talking about, I can take everything that Steph has ever said in her life, mm -hmm. every mannerism, every quirk, every way that she holds her hands when she sits, put into a computer and now be able to recreate you and not pay you for that mm -hmm. and take your voice and take your likelihood, your, 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 likelihood, your likelihood and your, your, your likeness. Yeah. Your likeness. Yes. Thank you. It, I, I really yeah, feel right. like that's it's where the solid, solidarity came from is because everybody, usually there's still friction within the group. Everyone saw that if we lose this, if we back down, there's going to be nothing to return to. Oh, They're not paying us yeah. streaming, so we have to do something. Absolutely. I'm excited, and hopefully last time this it was the situation, and they got the tentative deal, it was the next 24 hours that it was signed, and everyone went back to work the following day. So you never know. By Wednesday, it could be a very different workplace. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Just get, to get people back to work. Yeah. Yeah. That, and it Just, needed to be done. I know people might not understand all the details, but it's so important to get residuals from the streaming services. It's so important to protect yourself against AI. So and your they needed voice, to get that done. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, people always go, oh, and it cool. They made a song with Tupac and Frank Sinatra. Well, the reason that that makes sense to people and the reason those aren't just two random voices is because of the lives that they live. They yeah. have mm -hmm. credibility and they have a cachet. And people and are trying to that. take that right. Right. and yeah. make money off it and say, well, I'm just, this it didn't exist. And it's like, no, the reason these voices make money is because people have positive feelings towards it. And, and may I add that I think Alice so brilliantly said is that other industries will follow suit ahead of this. Absolutely. Because other industries are in fear of AI taking over, and they have seen a successful strike happen. And that becomes a, uh, an ad avenue of a way to go ahead of it. So I think we're starting to see other avenues of that. All right. I like it. I like it. Coming up <laughs> on DBL. Avenues and boulevards, Jeff. <laughs> I was waiting for that to end. There was a lot of <laughs> well, it was going to call the avenues. In there. <laughs> Speaking of directions, Corey had none. Yeah. All right, routes. <laughs> Wally Shore is putting his name out there to play Richard Simmons. Maybe Tori should as well. But is there a biopic in the works? Come on, guys. He's so <laughs> nice, that man. He's such a. A viewer asked us about something you might relate to. She said she needed to see an endocrinologist. Those are the doctors that treat diabetes, obesity, thyroid conditions, osteoporosis, and more. But every office she called from the DMV all the way to Delaware said they were booked until next spring. So she asked our Verify team if there's a shortage of endocrinologists. Our sources are a pair of scientific studies, the Association of American Medical Colleges, and Dr. Sethu Reddy, who leads the American Association of Clinical Endocrinology. Researchers estimate that America needs roughly 2,000 more endocrinologists, but they think the shortage will keep growing because of rising rates of obesity and diabetes, as well as an aging population. All of that creates additional demand. Dr. Reddy says some of his colleagues aren't in the clinic full time and others focus on one aspect of the field. You may have physician handling thyroid primarily or diabetes or uh, pituitary or adrenal disease. So we can verify that, yes, there is a shortage of endocrinologists, but they're not the only ones that are hard to find. The Association of American Medical Colleges says the U.S. could be short as many as 124,000 doctors of all kinds by the mid 2030s.
Welcome back to DBL. Pauly Shore is campaigning to play Richard Simmons in a new biopic. Well, it's not official yet. Pauly has been posting Whoa. about his interest in playing Richard Simmons on social media. That's that's really good, actually. Yeah. Yeah. He said he reached out to Richard and they have been playing phone tag with each other. Meantime, he asked his fans to reach out to Amazon, Disney, HBO, all the big producers to push for a biopic. He's also posting videos sweating to the yeah. oldies in Richard's classic short shorts. I love that. Pauly Shore makes me laugh. But TMZ <laughs> says Richard is aware of Pauly's effort to get a biopic off the ground, but wants nothing to do with it. Yeah. He simply wants to be live a private life, be left alone, out of the spotlight. So Pauly's pushing for this. He's doing a good job marketing it. He but sure I don't is. know if it's going to get off the ground and it could backfire because this is a person that really wants their privacy and you're cr trying to create um, buzz around a biopic that doesn't exist yet and be trying to s get fans now and and companies to like start lifting it up he has made it very clear he's not interested anymore at some point you sort of have to let go because I, at some point I don't know it's, it's a bit invasive no I don't, I well, he, he said that they're talking and TMZ, and TMZ says that he doesn't want anything to do with it right. so we're getting two different stories true true but phone tag is also they're not he's not picking up the phone could be phone Tag. Yeah, you know that's what, what I, I mean? Thought. Like when he says TNT. Anytime someone calls you, it's phone tag. Yeah. Because you never answer. Tori started picking her phone up. Uh, yeah, I did. Once. Yeah. Oh, really? But yeah. I was proud of You want to call? No. Nah. I didn't think nah. so. Okay. Go. I'm not going to play tag. <laughs> <laughs> um, would you guys think it's not it's not nice to? By the way, Richard Simmons is like a really good human and helped a lot of people who are obese before it was okay to like look at them as uh, really people were looking down on them. So I stand up for him. What a do lot. you think? Would I want to watch it? Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, the fact that he's clearly saying no, I don't want this. It's like Pamela Anderson when she had like the do uh, the TV show made about her point, and she yeah. felt so out of control and it was like revisiting all that trauma that she said. You know, when when obviously her tape came out and how horrified she was and she had no control that she went off and did her own show with Netflix which was absolutely amazing and completely relaunched her career I mean look at her now yeah, she's I thriving that. I love Pamela um so I mean but if he's saying he just really doesn't want it but he's a public do? figure so Al you're right that he could do it no matter what yeah I mean he, he could do you know it I mean? and the weird thing is uh, Steph I'm totally on your side and like when people want their privacy I'm all for it but Richard Simmons is an enigma and oh, yeah. but he's really the ground zero for the weight loss movement and body positivity in this country and he just went away and him going away without really ever being seen again generates interest what yeah. happened to this guy if he was on instagram every day no one would care it's a mysterious character the pamela yeah. and why the did Britney's, he leave like everyone wants to know what's going on like, just why tell did us. He, he was so into the spot like remember he'd fly into letterman like yeah. on wires and then nothing everyone wants to know why yeah, yeah he had a studio in in la i believe beverly hills because i went there and you could dance with him oh, and yeah. get, like a workout so class awesome. it was great it was amazing and yeah. then just nothing and just nothing yeah so right. i hope he's all right i hope he's all right and i would like to see this biopic yeah. Yeah. We'll be right back. Getting your flu shot is a super important step in ensuring you stay healthy during the winter. But WCNC Charlotte viewer Harper E said they were told if they received a cornea transplant, they shouldn't get the vaccine. They wrote to us. They said over 20 years ago, I had a cornea transplant about seven to eight years ago. I was told that taking the flu shot could cause a rejection of my cornea transplant. Is this true or false? Let's get the facts. Our sources are Lee Wiley, MD, ophthalmologist at Charlotte Eyes, Ear, Nose and Throat and the National Institute of Health. According to the National Institute of Health, the cornea is the most commonly transplanted tissue in the body. The study says while these transplants have very high success rates, rejection is also possible. To ensure a healthy transplant, doctors will give patients immunosuppressants to prevent the immune system from attacking healthy cells by mistake. We know that a vaccine stimulate the immune system, which is our theory on why it may put a transplant patient at a slightly higher risk of rejection. But infections also stimulate the immune system, so we have to keep that in mind as well. Wiley says if a patient has a rejection episode, those are usually treatable. However, if someone gets the flu or COVID infection, you can often end up with a life-threatening illness in certain cases. So overall, we recommend just getting the vaccine if it's available to you, and looking out for the signs and symptoms of rejection. Wiley says the signs of rejection include redness, sensitivity to light, decreased vision, and pain. He stresses that anyone could be at risk for cornea rejection, even if they are 20 years out from their transplant. You still have to monitor for rejection. The risk, you know, is once again low, 
but not zero. Wiley suggests patients chat with their local ophthalmologist who could prescribe drops called prednisone at the time of your vaccination to even further lower your risk of rejection. I am a proponent of getting the vaccine and monitoring the transplant very closely. With your Verify Fact Check, I'm Megan Bragg. Chances are you know someone who plays Fortnite or you've taken the battle bus yourself. The game is free to play with the option to buy lots of premium upgrades. Last December, the Federal Trade Commission filed a complaint against Fortnite maker Epic Games, claiming it tricked customers of all ages into making unintended purchases and locked the accounts of customers who disputed the charges. Now, there are claims about a settlement, with many people asking if they're really entitled to get some of their money back. So, let's verify. Is the FTC Fortnite settlement real? Our sources are the FTC and Epic Games. In March, the FTC finalized a settlement with Epic Games. Epic agreed to pay more than $500 million to the FTC. About half the money will go to pay a fine, and the other half will go to partially reimbursing customers who were charged for items they didn't want or whose kids made purchases without the parents' consent between 2017 and 2022. So, yes, the FTC Fortnite settlement is real. The FTC is currently emailing eligible users, and you can also file a claim online at fortniterefund.com. The deadline to file is January 17th, 2024. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. Welcome back. If you're having neck pain, you, your body might be telling you something that it's time to change a few of your bad habits. It's time for some joint and muscle support brought to you by Omega XL. One of the most common causes of neck pain is looking at your phone for too long. You can fix this by using good posture while you scroll. Next, check your sleeping position. This happens to me and try to keep your spine straight and often as possible. And don't forget to take stretch breaks a few times a day. Omega XL has improved the lives of millions of consumers supported by 30 years of clinical research, Omega XL's powerful and proven benefits have transformed the lives of athletes, celebrities, and dedicated daily users. Call 800-726-5185 or visit OmegaXL.com for more information. I was trying to speed through that. I'm oh, trying we still to have, have a little time left. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm trying to get better posture, and it really comes from the core in which I don't have. You don't have a core? No. Why not? I just have to get one. <laughs> well, yeah. Once that happens, then let's talk. Squeeze. <laughs>